And welcome back to another episode of The Doc Is In. Um, thank you guys so much um, for the views, for the comments. I cannot thank you enough for um, just tuning in and giving this a chance. Um, I'm here in a tie. This never happens, so please note it while it's here because it probably won't happen very often. Um, I also even have on cufflinks. Yep, representing those national champion LSU Tigers. Uh, so I wanted to do a couple videos based on um, some of the feedback that I got and some of the emails that I got. And again, thank you for emailing me. Thank you for uh, responding to me. Um, I appreciate emails. All of my social media and contact info comes up in the credits. So if you see something, feel free to hit me up. Instagram, uh, Twitter, or Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Gmail, yeah, there we go. Um, one of those four, just hit me up. Let me know uh, if you have a question, a concern, anything you want me to address. The one thing I'll ask is, if you're okay with me saying your name in the video, go ahead and say, hey, it's okay to say my name. If not, I won't say it. Um, and that's probably why the people who are getting responded to right now won't have their name said, but I promise you, I thank you so much for your response and you getting back to me. After the last video, I got a lot of feedback, and um, one of the things that quite a few people asked about was how to get over anger when it deals with relationships. So I'm not going to go too deep into my personal story because that's going to be for some upcoming uh, episodes. And I kind of want to save it for there, but I do want to address that question because I got it like four or five times. So here's the deal. When we're talking about relationships, I mean, you have to understand a, a few things. So if you're angry about what happened in the relationship, my question to you is, how are you dealing with your anger? Number one, I get this a lot. So it's you come into the office, you sit down, and then you proceed to tell me every single thing the person's done wrong. They cheated on me. They 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 used my my money and, you know, they didn't appreciate it. He sat at home all day and didn't do anything while I paid for everything. Or she's just using all my money and doesn't take care of the kids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, cool. I got that. But listen, if that's all you ever say about that person on loop, what you're doing is rehearsing a story. And the more you rehearse that story, the easier it is it'll be for you to keep telling that story. So the catch of it all is this. I get that you may be angry with the other person, as far as you know, but I would also then encourage you to think about, are you really angry with yourself? Because no one can do anything to you that you don't allow. So, and, and of course, there's, there's caveats to this, but I'm talking about in just a normal, a normal run-of-the-mill relationship. People can't do to you what you don't allow. And ultimately, we teach other people how to treat us. So if she spent all your money and didn't take care of the kids, if he just sat at home all day while you went to work, you taught them that that was okay. The relationship may have been emotionally abusive, financially abusive, whatever, but at the end of the day, you taught them how to do how to do that. So that means that you, as you go forward, need to work on setting good boundaries. Your boundaries have to be healthy. And in relationships, and I mean that and not only in romantic relationships, I mean family relationships, whatever. Set healthy boundaries for yourself. You need to be able to tell somebody, listen, I don't like the way you do X, Y, or Z, or I don't like that you did X, Y, or Z. And I prefer that you fix it. You know, these are the things that we're not saying, but that need to be said. When I think about uh, personal relationships of my own, I, I always remember I can't rehearse a story that says that the other person is 100% wrong and I'm 100% right. I have to take my part of the blame for what happened. So ultimately, even if my part of the blame is just I allowed this to happen, I have to take that. And, and when I do, it makes it easier for me to empathize with the other person and it gives me a little bit more compassion because sometimes I feel like we go into a relationship and we're expecting something of the other person that they just cannot give. They may not know how to give it. So you come from a household where your family was really, you know, they were tight knit and you had parents who were very, you know, they were loving and they were, um, 
they were very, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, faithful to each other. And they were committed to one another. But then you get into a relationship with somebody else who didn't come from that. And now you walk in with an expectation of he's going to be home every night. He's going to go work hard every day. He's going to do all of these things that I've seen throughout my life. Well, he doesn't know how to do that because he never saw that. So maybe in his eyes, love is, hey, I'm home, period. Like, I'm just not out with other women. He doesn't understand that he should be working to help take care of you guys. Uh, you know, those kinds of things. So understand what part you play. Understand that if you don't tell somebody what your needs are, you can't get mad at them for not meeting them. You have to make sure that they have a clear understanding of this is what I need from you. Now, if you've told them that and they're choosing not to meet those needs, then, hey, maybe they may not be committed to you. Maybe it's going to require another step of intervention. But the fact of the matter is you cannot get mad at something that the other person was never made aware of. Now, that's one thing that when I did couples counseling, OMG, I heard that a hundred times. Well, she should know. He should know. I don't know how he could not know. Well, the answer is he, she, they didn't pass mind reading. And because they didn't pass mind reading, that means it's on you to make sure that you tell them what you need. So please, please, when you're dealing with anger as far as relationships go, try and understand both sides and understand what part you played in it. That can help you to let it go. I intended for this video to be a little bit shorter, but I just want to go into one other thing. With relationships, you have to let go of what happened in the first one before you can, in a healthy way, move to your next one. What I mean is, if I'm still holding on to hurts from my last relationship, every person that I interact with now is going to have that put on them. And it's not fair. It's not fair to them at all. You need to address whatever that issue is that you've had and that you're holding on to. I, one of my favorite songs is Bag Lady by Erica Badu. OMG, if you're holding on to bags, it's going to be hard to get from place to place. L empty out your bag. And I want to ask everybody that today. What is in your bag? What is it? What hurt? What past regret? Whatever. What is that in your bag? Because whatever it is, you got to empty that bag. And some of us are walking around with bags, duffel bags, rolling, rolling suitcases, I mean, please clear that crap out because you can't go into a healthy new relationship holding on to all those old bags and all that old hurt. And I'll show you what I mean. When you hold on to that hurt, what happens is you begin to operate out of fear. Fear is the worst thing to operate from. And this is what I and this is like a just a a, a kind of joking but serious example. Okay. I'm fearful that somebody's going to hurt me. So because I'm fearful that they're going to hurt me, because I'm fearful that they're going to do what the last person did, whatever, I'm going to keep them at arm's distance. How are we ever going to build an honest, healthy relationship if I keep you at arm's distance? It's just not possible. Relationships require a level of vulnerability. And unfortunately, when you're holding all those bags and you're holding all that hurt, it's very, very hard to allow yourself to be vulnerable. So I want you to think about that. Am I being vulnerable? Am I allowing myself a chance at a happy ending? Okay, I'm, I'm a person, I believe in love. I really, really do. But at the same time, I've been hurt previously. And so I have to be mindful, like this person is not the last person. This person is like reset, brand new. We're trying something different. Learn from your past, but don't drag it into every relationship that you have. If you do, you will find yourself constantly in a cycle where, oh, we're in love on Monday, we're done on Tuesday. We're in love on Wednesday, we're done on Thursday. And you're having to get all these new people and it's always a start over type thing. That's not healthy. I'm sorry. It's just not. It's one thing when you're doing that. Let's say you're 18, 19 and, and you know, you're trying to find the right person. That's cool. But when you like 50, 60 and you dating new people every other week, but I can't find the right man. I can't find the right woman. It's not them. It's you. I mean, the common denominator in all of these failures is you. So work on you. What is it about you that you're giving off? What is it about you that you're holding that's causing you to not be able to have a healthy adult relationship?
Um, learn the difference between fear and danger. Because I think so many people operate out of fear, not realizing that it's just a perception. There's no danger. It's just fear. For example, okay, I'm fearful that this person will hurt me. Danger is, oh, he got seven previous charges for spousal abuse and is wanted in three states for murder. That's danger. Fear is perceived. Danger is real. Learn the difference because that can also help you get over certain things and let certain things go. Learn to love. And before you can learn to love somebody else, please love on yourself. Love yourself better than anybody else can. And I think that can help you get past anger of previous relationships. If you love yourself better than anybody else ever can, you will never have a problem setting boundaries. You will never have a problem being able to say, uh uh, that's not going to work for me. We got to try something different. I hope this video has been helpful for somebody. I hope it um, elucidated on maybe something that you had going on. Um, and I hope that I helped out those folks who wrote me about it. Again, please like, share, subscribe. And remember, love yourself today and love somebody else because we'll all be better for it.